Hello and welcome to another Small Love Live stream. It is Saturday, August 17th, 2019. And that means it is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. We've got a lot of interesting silver charts to take a look at, so we might as well get right at it. Lots happening in the silver market, even though the price moving up just a little bit, but price is not quite hit what I would call a bull market. I think the price of silver this year is up 12%, but so is the Dow. NASDAQ is up 19%. Gold's been the overperformer so far this year, the precious metals, at least of the two. So let's take a look at where we are. We've got a lot of charts. We're going to compare not just the price of silver to other asset classes, but what's particularly been happening the last month or so in the COMEX trading and also in the real big increases in silver ETFs, not just from the perspective of how much silver is flowing into, there's been a sharp increase, a vertical increase, as we'll see on the chart, of silver ETF um, inflows, but also a big increase in the trading of them. So lots of interest in silver at the moment, not quite reflecting itself yet in the price. So let's take a look now at the silver price. So here's a one year silver price. And that's encouraging. That's a good thing, as Bernie would say. Because the rich got all the silver and they're eating all the food. Um, and so silver is up, well, I guess it's up 13% this year. So it is outperforming the Dow. We can just pick that up in the last few days. But it's still trading under $18, $19, $20. But it is above $17 now at $17.16. If you remember what I said at the very beginning of the year, if gold hits a sustained bull market, gets over and holds over $1,500, we would see $20 silver. That was my prediction. Silver set to skyrocket. But it was based on something. It wasn't just based on silver is used in yoga pants and is so useful in our lives and... Shmita, whatever else they try to tell you why silver is rarer than gold. No, it's based on the fact that silver has a monetary component that is dormant. It's small and dormant. 10-15% of silver demand is for investment. It's a very small amount, but it's a very small market. So if that catches fire, then it can start to move up. If it doesn't catch fire, you're subject to yoga pants demand, and there's not much of it. And by the way, Investment uh, industrial silver demand is not skyrocketing. In fact, silver demand for electronics is down about 25 30 percent since 2010. So they can tell you all these generalities. Of silver is so useful in our lives, you always have to look at how much silver and also silver's price is largely not so much based on that demand anyway. It's related to it, but it's based on the COMEX trading, and we are seeing some positive signs in the COMEX trading. And we're seeing some positive signs now on the investment demand for silver, at least as far as the COMEX paper contracts and the ETF products. We're not seeing a big demand yet for physical silver. And if we could just take a quick look at that. And this is worth noting when we look at silver. Silver was never a big draw from 1986 to 2007. It was more of a hobby item. Uh, people were very interested in the gold, and we've seen those charts. I don't have them right in front of me now, but gold was the big seller from 86 to 2007. You could see also, at the height of the financial crisis, 2008 and 2009, U.S. Mint did rise from about 10 million uh, silver eagles a year to 19 million to 28 million in 2009 and 10. But it did not hit silver Eagle demand did not hit its peak until 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15, when three years in a row, almost four years in a row, it sold over 40 million, and then it dropped off precipitously in mid-2016. So a lot of that buying that happened from 2011, pretty much after the officials declared the end of the financial crisis, that's when the silver price, took, silver price went down, and that's when the sales physical sales went up now as the price stayed down at its levels of 2014 and 15 and 16 and 17 bouncing along the bottom between uh, 
14, 13, late 13s, up to about 21 in 2016. Silver demand was strong, but then as 2016 wore on and we did not break out of that $21, $22 range, it looks like the winds came out of the sale, the price fell, and people did not pile back into the market thinking this is a bargain because it was a bargain in 2013, 14, 15, and it was the same price again in 2017, 18, and 19. So we did not see the big uptick in American Silver Eagle sales as the price stayed low. And I suppose there was a good four or five years of accumulation and probably a bit of throwing in the towel. But we have seen now some big moves on the COMEX and especially in the silver ETFs. We're going to take a look at that. But let's take a look at the five-year price. And you can see, you know, over five years, this, I guess, would be disheartening if you were buying all this time. You could say, this is a gift. I had five years to buy the price of silver at these prices. Probably average price here looks like about $16 an ounce if you're looking at the chart. But it's down about 12% since the beginning of 2000. 15 late 2000 mid 2014 now you could say well you got to accumulate for five years but you also missed out potentially on another asset class for five years that actually went up during that time period so here's your five-year chart now something very interesting before we look at our silver etfs and our comex i want to look at the gold etfs let's just take a look and i mean the gold silver ratio but first, let's look at the 10-year. Now, if you bought way back in August of 2010 and you held tight, you, know, you bought in the uh, $13, $14 range, well, then you'd be up. But for the most part, I don't think anyone just bought in 2010 in the summertime, bought their entire stash and has been holding on ever since. I would think they might have sold some when it went up or they might have sold some along the way, but... At least if you've held on tight, that silver is worth at least 21% more. And that's on the strength of the fact that you can see that little blip in the last four months where we've gone from about 14 to 17, which is a nice move. But that chart doesn't tell you much other than silver did hit almost $50 an ounce. Now, the gold-silver ratio has some interesting, I circled them, points. It seems like. If you look at where I've circled, that the gold-silver ratio will have these drops. So if you look in 2010 where I've circled, there was a significant sharp drop in the middle of that circle, and then it bounced up, and then you had a massive sharp drop all the way down to about 32 to 1 in 2011. So that little drop there, somewhat sharp drop, presaged a big move in silver. Now, the gold-silver ratio is based on the price of gold versus the price of silver. So when you see a dive down in the gold-silver ratio, that, that is a reflection of silver pretty much massively overperforming gold. And generally, silver only massively outperforms gold in a bull market. It underperforms gold in normal times, and it underperforms gold in uh, bear markets but in a bull market it has the potential to outperform so you can see the average was in the 60s it had gotten up to about 72 in 2010 and it banged down to the mid 60s a big sharp drop bounced up and that pre saged a big drop in the gold silver ratio look again in 2016 you can see you had a big drop we're in the middle of the chart i got a circle bounce back up and then another big drop so those are two areas where you had sharp drops and then you had a outperformance of silver versus gold. Now, we've seen exactly the same thing. And again, this isn't investment advice. This isn't dispositive. This doesn't mean that's it. This chart proves it. When you get a lot of these uh, people, we did a blog post the other night should check it out is the inverted yield curve the new Shemitah I mean people are going nuts over that trying to make it sound like it means everything that whenever you have an inverted yield curve I'm not going to get into that topic tonight my point is anytime you look at something it doesn't mean even if it looks like there's some kind of correlation there's some type of pattern historically you never know but the point is if you look here at the last circle you can see a sharp drop in the gold 
silver ratio and then it a sharp rise up now if it's going to be just like 2010 11 and 2016 the last two times we've seen relatively significant strong price moves of silver in a six month period well it's setting up nicely to repeat that may not happen it could just continue to go back up and go back down but i do want to point that out all right now i think that does it also let's just take a look at the long-term gold silver ratio now what i've done here i've marked the same thing you can see i've hit the high points and the low points on the top on the gold silver ratio generally when you have a big run-up in the gold silver ratio like we see in 1992 it generally falls and falls for a period of time pretty nicely we see that again in 2010 straight down and now it looks like maybe we hit that peak at 92 in 2019 but one thing that is definitely worth keeping in mind with silver is look at those twin peaks 1980 and 2011 you don't see a plateau at all the only time you see solid steady ground the silver is when it grinds along the bottom and you can see it there between 1984 to 2005 yes indeed silver historically will have its peak but you could see also from like 2014 to now grinding along the bottom now the question is it's possible maybe inevitable silver will have another spike but whether or not that spike can hold now my thesis is that it might be able to hold that at some point maybe physical gold and silver may be viewed as having some type of permanent monetary value in a negative interest rate environment that would take a shift in mindset but i think you can see historically at least the last two times we've had the spikes people get cold feet pretty quickly with uh, silver it spikes and then it dies it's actually not healthy if you look at those those are parabolic moves you actually if you hold an asset you don't want a parabolic move like when happened to bitcoin because it's gonna fall and fall hard i mean you want it if you're prepared to dump it the problem is any in any parabolic move people are like this is it it's going to the moon and then as soon as it hits 50 it, it a few months later it's down to 15 again it was the same with Bitcoin. It went up to 20 large and then boom, next thing you know, it was $3,000. So parabolic moves are not good. What you want are those long, steady moves. And gold is actually developing nicely. Um, silver may catch up and it may catch up at, you know, three times the speed. But the question is whether it'll hold it. We'll take your thoughts on that. But um, I think it's possible it can hold it. But I wouldn't hold my breath that silver has suddenly become something that people are going to buy and hold. Except, however, maybe it is. And that's why I'm saying there might be a chance. Because here's something very, very interessant. Très interessant. Or molto interessante, as they say in Italiano. Okay, so here is silver ETF demand. Now, you may, it may be hard for you to see here. Uh, but you have a vertical increase it goes all the way to the far right of the chart of the amount of silver in etf so it's about 590 million ounces just five six weeks ago and now it's like 670 million ounces and that's a big increase and that's a good thing for the silver market um it's a vertical rise without really a massive vertical price if you're looking at the chart uh all the charts are on smuggle.com if you're looking at it on your screen or on your phone, you can see the big green blob at the bottom. That reflects the amount of silver in SLV. But it's not just SLV. They're all moved up very quickly. So SLV has gone from like 310 million ounces to 360 million ounces. You know, adding 40 million ounces in a very short period of time. It looks like all the others have done the same sprot. You can see in the pink is gone. I don't know how many they have there? It's but but it's gone up at the same rate and the price has it now that means investors are pouring into silver ETFs they're buying silver ETFs and 
the trading volume on the silver ETFs is also increasing at rates we haven't seen since 2012. So there's clearly interest in silver and generally a lot of volume presages a price move. Now let's look at the commitment of traders. And again, the bottom green you see we're at pretty much the highest levels of open interest. We had good open interest last summer. And you could see the decrease in the net shorts represented by the blue line. And you could see we now have one of the longest period of times in five years where the price has been rising. Price has been rising pretty much since May, uh, a long period of time. We had one of the longest period of times of declining prices last summer from like June to October. Did, did nothing but go down. Well, we're pretty much gone nothing but gone up for the last few months, which again is a very good sign for the price of silver. Now, we want to take a look now at where all this silver is being accumulated. Now, we saw the ETFs. Let's look at the COMEX warehouses. Now, the COMEX warehouses aren't moving up as fast in the last couple of weeks as they were. We looked at this last week. They're still heading higher. Over 300 million ounces of silver stashed away in the COMEX, the largest being JP Morgan's vault, and then the Brinks vault, and then the uh, coins and things CNT vault. But you can see that chart there. All right, now let's look at what's happened in the silver stockpiling. It may be hard for you to see, but I can read it out to you. So we mentioned that the COMEX vaults actually lost a bit of silver in the last uh, four weeks, 5 million ounces. It's down about 1%. But the big increases are still Deutsche Bank's ETF last four weeks, 7.1 million ounces added. That's a 24.5% increase in just four months. Um, the SIVR uh, silver ETF up 14%. They added 13 million ounces. The SLV, just in the past four months, 24 million ounces. They're now at a record high 380 million ounces. SIVR, 170 million ounces. Deutsche Banks uh, now has 36 million ounces. Gold Money and uh, Bullion Vault now have 27 and 24 million ounces of silver respectively they've added a percentage or two the last four weeks the sprott silver etf is up to 59.2 million ounces and they added about two percent worth of silver to their etf in the past four weeks so if you take into account all of the silver depositories etfs and other funds you'll see there's about 1.13 billion ounces stashed away and that's, I'm going to show you a chart here that also shows a vertical move. Now, we've mentioned that since 2000, and actually since 2000, but since the advent of silver ETFs in 2006, pretty much the investors have poured into silver ETFs, even though, even when the price has dropped. And you can see there's a steady incline. But take a look at the far right of the silver ounces held. You see that vertical rise just in the last five weeks. That's a big amount of silver flowing in. Now, granted, we've been on an incline. Yes, there's been silver being added, but never at that rate. Even when you've got this kind of gradual rate from 2006 all the way up to 2012, it was a gradual, steady, good increase in the amount of silver. But here we've gone from a billion ounces to one point. 132 billion ounces or 130 million ounces of silver just poured into these different funds in the last six seven weeks now 132 million ounces that's a lot of silver it really is i mean we saw that 47 million american silver eagles was a record well it's more than twice the size of that this is a big increase. I don't know what it means, but it certainly is a big increase. And the value, if you look to the far right on the other chart. Now, we did have at one point, there was, I think it's $36 billion worth of silver stashed away. Well, now we're close to $20 billion. And that's, again, went from 15 to 20 That 
line is also vertical, and that's based on the fact that a lot of silver went into the ETFs, into the funds, the COMEX depositories, and the price rose. So you are seeing a significant interest in silver, even though the price hasn't really moved. So we saw the COMEX, we saw the ETFs, all adding silver at a furious pace. And one last thing we'll chart we'll look at, then we're going to sell mugs. And we're going to take your questions. Now, this is a point I like to make all the time. Take a snapshot of this chart. Go on smallgold.com. Never forget this. Silver is not a good store of value. I don't care what you say. There's a lot of red on this chart. Over time, it has a lot of bad years. Consistent. Like from 1988 to 1992, every year went down. 2013, 14, 15, three years in a row, it went down. Now, there was, granted, there was a period 2002 to 2007 went up. But remember, this is up against the dollar. So you would expect, because gold generally outperforms the dollar and almost always outperforms other fiat currencies. Silver doesn't. If you look at this chart from 1970 to 2018, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 years you lost money. Two years you lost 43% and 48%, 1980, 1981. 2013 you lost 36%. 2014 you lost 20%. 2008 you lost 24%. These are amounts you never lose in gold. One year I think gold was down 30%. That's it. These are huge losses that happen, but the gains are outsized. 1979, 374%. 1973, 61%. Never, 2011 was not a big year, even though it hit $50, because by the end of the year it had gone down. It was down 10% that year. But 2010 was an 83% gain. So when people tell you that silver is a store of value, it's a good hedge, historically, it's not. It is the devil's metal, not for that reason, but... One could apply that. It is a roller coaster ride here with silver. And one does have reason to believe. I mean, you got to take the good with the bad. You can say it, at some point it could spike again. But uh, when people talk about it as if it's some type of uh, store of value, just put it away and forget about it. Well, there's historically, if you did that, you would have been better off holding dollars in a draw in many instances than holding on to silver. And again, this is not trashing silver. These are facts. The charts bear them out. You could say, oh, the gold-silver ratio should be lower. The price should be higher. Okay, but they're not. And that's what I deal in. I don't deal in uh, silver pumper videos and people getting together insisting the whole world is wrong and that uh, the silver cult is right. That doesn't mean that silver won't go up. It doesn't mean it won't skyrocket. It just means it doesn't happen very often. And there you are. All right, now mugs. Before we get into it, what do we got for mugs? Well, we, I want to show you some mug shots. Of course, mug shots are important because a lot of people have forgotten about mug sales are down, which is very surprising. Um, I'm very happy that we have some patrons on Patreon. We're up to 18 patrons. I'll give you the numbers here. Um, very nice of them that we also have three subscribe star. We got to get that number up. I've been getting donations via PayPal. Thank you very much for that. You received a nice generous one today. And also Bitcoin and Litecoin donations. Bitcoin, and this is just anecdotal. When people keep talking about Bitcoins, the currency, and there's no use case for Litecoin because everyone's going to be using Bitcoin. I haven't received a Bitcoin donation in years. But I do get Litecoin all the time. Now, that tells you something. People don't want to part with their Bitcoin. I used to get Bitcoin like 2015 and 16 through Coinbase when, uh, you know, it was low. It, was, it wasn't expensive. And people actually like trying to convince me this is a good thing. Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But now no one sends me Bitcoin. And it's very easy to do. If you have a Bitcoin wallet, you hold up your phone to the QR code you see on the screen. You can send Bitcoin. Litecoin I get... I probably say maybe once a month, twice a month, I do get Litecoin for the last couple of years. So, all right. And also, I want to thank people who do send me support small gold 
by my P.O. box. I receive silver. I receive checks, cash, notes. Very nice. You can do that by sending something to Small Little LLC P.O. Box 714 Dover, New Hampshire 03821. Now, let's take a look at our mug shots. And all of your mugs are available either through the Small World store or on smuggle.com or at the links below this bit shoot and YouTube. And there's your first mug shot. That is the Small Gold Beer Stein, a big sell. I think everything is 20% off tonight in the Small Gold Zazzle store. But if you want a handwritten note and you want the Small Gold Classic or Super Classic mug, you can order those directly from the Small Gold site. Here is the, and I send those out myself, there is the Classic mug. And I will take uh, any form of payment you want to make. If you want to send Bitcoin or Litecoin, just let me know. Um, here is the Super Classic mug. Mug shot of a Super Classic mug. We also have travel. Remember, mugs are real wealth. Um, here is a Frosted Beer mug. The picture does not do it justice. Looks really great when you fill it with beer. That is the Small Gold mug. Beer mug, not the Beer Stein. And don't forget, don't forget our furry friends. Sold a few of these. These are the small gold pet bowls. A little bit big for a cat, but um, I think you can get it smaller. But that is the dog small gold pet mug. And you want to take small gold to go. There is your travel mug. All these mugs now on sale on the Zazzle site or from small gold directly. Go to smallgold.com or just check the links below this video and you will see them. And then, of course, here is a, a mug shot of a shot. Not a mug shot, but a shot mug shot. And there it is. We also have those for you whiskey drinkers, cognac drinkers, vodka, vodka drinkers, the small gold mug. And remember, always lead the mug life. And there you are. So that's how you can support Small Gold. I'm glad you're all here tonight. And now let's see what you guys are saying in the comments. Oh, I got to be crowded. I got 27 watching. All right. Well, I'm going to take a look at the comments and see what you guys are saying here. Philip Quinn, I'm here to find out. And I'm also going to check to make sure we don't get cut off because that's a problem we've had with these live streams. One of the problems I have with YouTube least of the problems but is that I get cut off all the time okay so Mr. Quinn says I'm here to find out if I should buy another roll of war nickels now what I know about war nickels again not investment advice is war nickels can be had and we did a show on them oh when was it a couple of months ago you can look for it so I put all the smuggle videos back on YouTube so you can search them if you want but um the the nickels appear to be a great way to buy silver at spot. Now, you won't get spot if you go to buy them. But the problem with silver, there, there's not a, I'm sorry. I don't want to say there's a problem with them. But they don't go for any type of premium. And the reason is, I mean, they're a nice coin because they look nice. They got the P on the back. I wish I could show you a picture of them. Um, they're 56% copper. They're 35% silver. And they're like 9% manganese. And in order to extract three metals, it's a, it's a more expensive process. So if you throw them in a hopper at your local coin shop or whoever's going to take them and then have them melted down, it's more energy intensive. So, But if you're looking at them from the point of view as a barter item, I suppose you can say they're worth, I think they're worth about a buck in precious metal and copper that's not bad uh, for a nickel but um yeah i don't i not recommending you buy them or don't buy them by the way if you are going to buy precious metals again way you can help out small gold we have affiliate links on the website and also below this bit shoot and youtube you click on those links you can go to golden eagle coin you can go to money metals exchange you can go to sd bullion all good bullion dealers and if you go there through those links, you pay no more, no less than if you visit those sites directly. And Smoggle gets a small commission. So if you're going to do some precious metals shopping, uh, please consider doing it through the links. Also, we have coffee, storage, food on the website, other offers. You can check those out and help the site out and help yourself out. 
as well. All right, so War Nichols, I hope I answered your question. Philip. Yeah, Roger making a good point here. He says, I know when gold silver markets a peak when I start seeing the shopping mall store say, we buy your gold and silver just like 2011. They were everywhere. And that's true in the United States. I remember seeing them, guy standing on the corner with the placard over himself, pointing you down the road where the guy, where they would buy them. Yeah, we're not there yet. I don't see it. I haven't seen that. Philip says, I think gold will be permeable for the next couple of years. Okay, so if that's the case, one can make an argument then that gold, uh, silver might be too. Might be. Historically, hasn't been. But if there is, again, my thesis is on if we have the sustained negative interest rates. You know, we've been doing a couple of videos on this, like where to put your money in this type of rate where you don't get a return. And uh, someone made a snarky comment. It's like, oh, the only thing I'm getting from you is buy stamps. I'm, like, I'm not telling you to buy stamps. I'm just pointing out that if, and I got some very good responses too. People saying you buy medical supplies. There's a lot of things you can hold your money. I think Roger made a good point. Pay off your um, your utility bill or prepay your utility bill. Let them have the money instead of your uh, your bank. Because in the bank, you lose money. If they have charges, monthly charge or fees, or they don't give you any interest. I was just suggesting places to put your money. I was not to, you weren't, see a lot of people have gold or silver on the mind. Why are you recommending gold and silver? Well, you know I didn't recommend silver. Silver goes down sometimes. The idea was where can you put your money that's almost cash or cash equivalent. Even gold isn't cash or cash equivalent because it goes up and it goes down. That was the only point I was making with those last couple of videos. But now if you want to be a little more speculative, yes, then people might start to consider solid assets like gold and silver. And as Roger's pointing out, gold is at an all-time high in the Aussie dollar. Which is quite good. Um, it's at the all-time high in many currency now. I had an interview today with Steve San Angelo. You can check that out. That's now up on BitChute and on YouTube. And I think he mentioned 73 countries. You now have a um, all-time high in the price of gold. And it's interesting that the dollar has not yet hit that peak yet of 2011 it was $1911. Now, another bullish sign is that means that the dollar is being the considered the safe haven and people are pouring into the dollars and they're pouring into treasuries for the precise reason I mentioned why the Fed raised rates in the first place. When all the pumpers were saying they could never raise rates, they're going to go negative. The idea was the Fed had done QE for 5 years and they wanted to get some space between themselves and their European and Japanese counterparts. So they stopped doing it. They convinced those those banks to do it. And now they're negative and the U.S. is positive. What does that mean? U.S. gets the capital flows. So the problem with that, though, is that the dollar index gets high. And at some point, there's it's nice to have a strong dollar, but it's not nice to have it too strong. That harms both the U.S. and emerging markets like China because... Foreign countries work on dollars. They lend dollars in dollar-denominated debt, and when the dollar price goes up, that means even if they only owed 6%, well, if the price of the dollar index is going up, you could see what happens in a quick example. Instead of owing 6%, they could be owing 10 12% because they got to go out and get dollars to pay for, to service their debt that they said they'd pay 6% on. For the United States, it's not a good idea if the dollar index gets too high. So, if this dynamic continues with negative interest rates globally, 17 trillion, one in four, over one in four bonds in the world is now a negative rate. It was only like 12 billion, 12 trillion a few months ago. So that's going vertical. If this is going to be a permanent feature of the economy, well, yeah, people will be buying dollars and they'll be buying U.S. bonds, which will drive the yield down on the U.S. bonds as well. But there will come a point where people say, I got to get something. I'm not going to lose money. Um, that's where gold and silver come in. I think it's just, I can see a scenario where even the people who don't like gold and don't like silver, they probably don't like not getting a yield. And they may, some of them may move their money into those metals. I think silver will be the last resort. They're not going to go there first. They never do. 
but they don't have to get silver doesn't have to get much of that investment dollar it's a tiny market good comment there philip and good comment roger ann is here hello ann bernie on joe rogan was hilarious he has all the ideas, but depends on who pays. I wish I could, you know, I should listen to it and then do it. The one thing is, we can't not afford to spend the money because everyone in this country's got to have health care, has got to have free college, got to have three houses, and uh, if they don't have that, that's not fair. The 1% is eating all the food, and, and I'm going to make sure that... Okay, Bernie. <laughs> the 1%. All right. Oh, Rob Gibbs. Small gold is the best source for real world on physical PMs and things economics. No one does it better. Thank you for that paid advertisement, Rob. Your check will be in the mail. Ann Holloman says he she agrees and he rocks. Well, your check is in the mail too, Ann. All right. Philip Quinn. Rob Lewis says all the angles. Nobody else thinks of. Plus, he plugs mugs. Yes. Pablo in the house. Pablo Pino. Hola, amigo. Que tal? And, and how's the Airbnb? There we go with the side conversations and people picking up right up where they left off. Talking about their finances and Philip. Mugs are easy to get. Yep, Roger's got his own quality small gold mugs. He's got his own fake knockoffs that he makes. I don't have the pictures here. The next time I will show them to you. All right, what else have we got here? We got the talking about Gilligan's Island, Epstein, Roger. Bix Weir says silver is more important than gold, and apparently it's going one to one with gold. <laughs> All right. Professor Curtis Urban Treasure. Wait a minute. I think I saw Crypto Shrugged Author. Did I not, or did I imagine that? If I did, I got to say hello. He says, Oh, yes. He must be traveling around either Latin America or Spain, as I last remember. All right, let's see what else we got here before I let you go. Silver demand chart speaks volumes, especially the Deutsche Bank figures after 10,000 plus layoffs. Okay, Professor Urban Treasure Hunter. Now, the Deutsche Bank ETF, what I'm guessing is, it's got nothing to do with Deutsche Bank. They're just running an ETF. Um, it's nothing to do with the health of Deutsche Bank. It's got nothing to do with what their issues are. and It's just it's a fund that they run. But what I think it reflects is European buying, which would be interesting. This guy it has zero to do with the with with Deutsche Bank. It doesn't help Deutsche Bank if they're running a, a fund. But I think what's happening is Europeans, perhaps, and someone who's European might be able to help me. I know that there's VAT when you buy silver in Europe. Kind of defeating the purpose. You pay 20%. But if you can buy an ETF and avoid the VAT, which maybe you can, I don't know, uh, and people are thinking now's a good time to buy silver. You know, the one that's available in Europe probably is the Deutsche Bank one. Just a guess. All right. Paper mug derivatives, Phil Pablo says. All right. Ken Inkster is here. He's mugging for life. Does everybody remember that song, Mugging for Life? I tell you what. Get you in the mood to buy mugs because... Mark Battaglia, who is my, I guess, the person who, my, my music guru, who makes all of the music for this site. When Lambo, I think, is what we started out with today's The Crypto Street, Dim Rickards, Silver Pimp. You don't know the names of all these, but that's what he calls them. Bitcoin Blues, Dow 20,000. But then he's done this great one, Mugging for Life. Listen to this. This is, uh, there you go. Yeah, mug life, baby. Mug life, baby. Yeah, we rock in the booth. We mug it for life. We mug it for truth. Small gold here, and he's spitting the facts about the pumper community and the way that they act. We mug it for life. We ain't playing the games. We all know the lies, and we all know the names. Come on. Mug it for life. Mug it for life. Small gold. All right, mugging for life. What else we got? Durgish Patel. What is he saying? You asked the same question. What question did you ask? Oh, marijuana guru. If base metal mining goes down because of an economic downturn, okay, how much industrial metal is going to be used to offset? Hmm. Well, that's a tricky question. 
Here's an interesting dynamic about silver. Very interesting. And that could be a bullish scenario. When the price of gold falls, gold miners may pull back on gold production. When the price rises, makes sense, gold production will go in overdrive because now they can hit those veins where maybe they couldn't do it profitably at 1100 but at 1500 they got a couple hundred dollars all in sustaining costs worth of profit they can hit, so they'll increase production. Silver miners will do the same, um, but the bulk of silver doesn't come from silver miners. It comes from, as you mentioned, from base miners. Base miners are going to base mine gold, or no matter what. They care less about the price of silver. That's not their. That's not what they're going for. But they do throw off a lot of silver, and it's nice for them. But they're not going to increase their copper, tin, zinc, aluminum, whatever they're doing, just to get the silver because the silver price goes up. In fact, if there's less demand because of a recession, they're just going to mine less, and they'll be happy to get the higher silver price on what they mine. But they're not going to bring as much silver to market. That's a good thing, as Bernie would say. Why? The price of silver is rising, but the supply is not rising to meet it. That's where you get the investment component of silver. That's where it's that little bit of dynamite. No one really buys much investment silver until they do. And they do that when they see gold taking off. And it could happen at precisely the time when mining supply is not coming onto market, which is causing people to dig into their drawers and find old coins and silverware and things of that nature and that doesn't come to market fast enough so good good question there marijuana guru all right what question did you ask the same eh, eh, Durgesh Patel what did you ask okay yeah you asked the percent yeah the percentage of uh silver in the market made available from primary mines 20 30 percent mostly in Mexico and uh Peru Philip Quinn, small gold doggy ball. Well, there you go, Philip. Have at it. Click on the link below, purchase it. I don't know how much that one costs, but it's um, it's not too outrageous. It's probably twenty bucks. You know, I just fed my dog, and just I I don't have a small gold. <laughs> Actually, I have all the other one. I do not have the small gold uh, pet bowl. It's a big size. It's a nice size for your dog. And people used to send me pictures of their dogs. I haven't seen those lately. All right. The marijuana guru, I don't think investment demand is nearly what the industrial demand is. That's right. And that's my point. I, if you haven't been with us before, I, I go through this all the time. The investment demand for silver is like 10, 15 percent, 12 percent in the last couple of years. Uh, it got as high as about almost 25 percent in 2015 when there was a lot of retail buying of silver. But for the most, and that was investment silver. But for the most part, the breakdown for silver is pretty much 65, 70 percent industrial, then about 15, 20 percent jewelry and silverware, and then 15 10 15 percent investment demand now gold this is why gold moves first the investment demand for gold is about 40 percent and that includes about 10 percent of it's like central bank buying the rest is institutions people buying bullion in large amounts 45 percent is jewelry it's a good portion of that also investment because you buy 18 24 karat jewelry uh, some of it's costume jewelry, so it's not all investment. But you can see if you take the 40% investment demand for gold, the 45% investment demand for jewelry, shave off some of that that's not investment quality jewelry, and you're up, you know, you're up near 80, 75, 80% of gold demand is for investment. Silver, not, not quite the same. So that's why it does not do well, and it's just subject to industrial demand, during a period of time where people are just chilling. They're not really worried about, when I say they're not worried, I'm saying in general, there's not a lot of people worried about, there's some people on this call, they're just worried all the time. But we have not seen big worries the last three or four years. And they're starting to see it again. That's why the price of gold is moving higher. But gold moves first. I make this point all the time because gold is the investment uh, metal. The problem with silver has been that uh, no matter what you hear on the pumper channels, oh, it's so useful, it's an electronics, it's in solar panels. They don't give you the numbers. Silver, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, is, uh, I think it was 310 million ounces were used in electronics in 2010 and 228 million ounces were used in 2018. It's gone down. Why? Smaller computers, some handheld devices, a little substitution, a little thrifting going on. Same with solar panels. 
you may have seen a two or three fold increase in the amount of, so of solar panels being produced in the last seven, eight years, but you've only seen a 10, 15% increase in the amount of silver because they figure out how to use less silver. It's called thrifting. They use nanoparticles, new technologies. Eventually, if it gets too expensive, they have ways of using aluminum. So while silver is useful, it's versatile, it's one of the most useful metals, it's just how much of it do you need? When I hear the yoga pants and medical or they put it in in smart bombs and they put it in ICBs, yeah, they do. They put it in, you know, there's a couple of monster boxes in a Tomahawk missile, but it's not like you're going to have hundreds of millions of ounces of silver flying around in a war. I mean, they they use it, but you got to you got to look at the numbers. So just to mention that it has a lot of uses doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of uses for copper, a lot of uses for aluminum, a lot of uses for zinc. Just how much? How much? How much? All right. 20% VAT on silver, says Durgish, and silver, yes, that's right. Andrew LoQuadro is here. All right. He loves that uh, thing. Mugging for life. Okay. Small gold. How would you sell off your pile of metal and avoid capital gains at the same time? Well, not having capital gains. Um, you know, buy at 30 and sell at 20. <laughs> then you don't have capital gains. There you go. All right. Well, I don't give tax advice. You know that. I don't give investment advice. But I do give mug advice. So get your small gold mugs today. And unless I got any more questions, I'm going to give it over to Bernie. And he is going to give us the 10-second countdown if we have no further questions. Bernie, have at it. All right, so now we're going to count to 10. And if at the end there's no more comments, then I'm going to, I'm going to go back to one of my three houses and I'm going to have a good time. So, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1%, 0. Have a good night, Lewis. Have a good night, Bernie. And... Have a good night, everyone out there in small gold mugland.